Uh, guys, uh, real quick, uh, I've had a couple guys ask me for cards and stuff. I don't have a business card. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. It's coach at Coach Joe Adam. Um, I'll follow you back. I, uh, I, I tend to put a lot of content online. You might see some drill work. You might see some things I've picked up along the 21 years that I've been coaching. Uh, so it, uh, I think it'll be, it'll be good that way. I uh, want to get into pass protection, something that I'm really, really, this is one of my things I'm really passionate about is, is pass pro. I was very lucky to be um, tutored and helped by uh, Coach Skarnecchia with the uh, New England Patriots. All right, and uh, uh, we spent a lot of time together my first year at Syracuse, went through a lot of pass pro uh, things, and it has really helped our pass pro. We finished in the top third in the country as far as sacks given up this year, so uh, we made some strides that way, uh, obviously facing some, some really good defenses uh, in the ACC. So I'm going to get into uh, a little bit less schematic and more uh, technique-wise. All right, which might translate over uh, for some of you guys. So a couple things about uh, pass pro, all right, as we get through it here, okay? So a couple really key components, all right, is your weight has to stay inside the midline of your body, okay? And I'm talking about when we're moving in our plane from side to side, all right, where I see a common mistake is, is when guys are going what I call the post to the inside and the kick to the outside, is I see them moving their shoulders back and forth, okay? I, some guys coach that way, I don't. I like to keep my weight inside the midline. So here's the midline of my body, right? I got good bend in my knees. I wanna keep my, my head and my weight slightly on that, on that up foot, on that post foot, so that I'm able to post and I'm able to push off and kick but I never have my weight on my outside, never shift it outside, all right? What happens when young kids especially shift their weight to the outside is now when that DN or that D, D player uh, counters, right, we cannot shift our weight back fast enough, and we end up dropping the inside foot, which is a cardinal sin in my opinion, all right, and then we give up the easiest way to the quarterback, which is a straight line, okay? So everything that we do at Syracuse is built off of weight inside your midline, all right? And it's something that I look at very closely when we're, drill, when we're drilling the stuff, okay? We talk about punch, all right? I don't like carrying our hands very low because our kids have a hard time of getting their punch through. I don't like it carrying very high, all right, because we give the defenders more chance, all right, to reach and grab. So we're, we're, we're probably at a chest-to-chest -chest point right here, okay? So when I talk about it, all right, our, our, our strike, our thumbs are in a, in a slight W, they're about four inches apart, all right? And this is where our striking point is, okay? It doesn't have to be this, all right? We're not looking for an elongated strike. It's a quick strike, okay? Why we teach that is as soon as our arms go back, what just happened to my chest? Exposed it, right? Race to the chest. So now keep our, our, keep our thumbs in the W, keep our hands tight, and I'm gonna move in this plane, all right, and I can move, and I've got, I've got good body posture, and I've got good punch, all right, facility, okay? All right, when we talk about man side sets, and I really use this for uh, all of our tackles. I call it a drag hand technique, okay? A drag hand technique, and here's what it is. So let's say I'm the left tackle here, all right? I've got a three technique and a five technique, all right? <clears throat> when I come out of my set, all right, I'm gonna kick back off the DN, but I'm gonna post this inside hand and I'm gonna drag it with me, okay? Hence the term drag hand. Why am I doing this? Because a lot of the time on a man side situation, we're on the man side of our protection, it allows me to feel the three technique while my eyes are on the defensive end. Okay, because if they run the stunt or if my defensive end loops, I know that, boom, I got to come back and pull that three technique over to me, all right, which I'll get down the road here when we get to twists and gains. But that drag hand technique has really helped our tackles and really helped our ability to, to combat some of the gains and the inside twists that we see in the pass protection world, okay? So, again, drag hand sets also... 
on the, on, the, on the fan side of our protection, or the slide side, we use it just to keep my shoulder square for my tackles, all right? So they don't turn out even though their inside gap is protected. So we use that technique a lot. The other thing is, I need a couple guys to, to, to implement this, all right? As far as slide side guards, we use what I call a stick technique, okay? So Trevor, come on up here, all right? Coach, Dylan, can you come on up here? This is the price you pay when you sit in the front row, brother. All right, you be the, uh, you be the defensive lineman right here, okay? All right, so let's say, all right, for argument's sake, the fan side or the slide side is this side. So I'm the guard, he's the center. He's sliding with me, all right? My eyes go to the B gap. I'm responsible for whoever comes in the B gap, okay? So now, this is a very specific technique all right, now, once I come out of the ball, all right, I don't want to, I don't want to slide away from this guy, okay? Because what happens is you create space, you make it really hard on the center to get over and, 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 and seal up this A gap, all right? So what I do is, as this guy's starting to come to my hip, the first thing I do is I come to my stance is I stick my inside hand and foot, all right? Notice where my eyes are, they're still where? in the B gap, okay? And I want to let him come to me. Come on, keep coming. Come on, coach. I want to let him come to me, and I'm going to wedge my hip into this center as I start to turn my body ever so slightly because now it allows me as a guard, I'm going to go hunt, all right? I'm waiting for the defensive end to come spin back, and then I'm going to plant it, all right? So... That stick technique that we use with our inside hand and foot, all right, is a real key to how we handle especially A-gap players on the slide side of the protection, all right? It allows the center to come off, all right, but it allows me to be aggressive and gouge with this inside hand, but I'm not turning and looking at him because if something blows through the B-gap, that's my responsibility, right? But it allows me to sit here and do this, wedge it, right, keep this guy at the line, and then now, once I see something coming, I can come off and smack it, okay? So that's something, thanks coaches. That's something that's really helped us, all right, as far as our slide side, all right, types of things. We talk about independent feet, step and replace, all right? Believe it or not, coaching offensive line is no different than coaching corners in a press technique. It's very similar in those two terms, in those two factions. I've been lucky enough to coach both. But we talk about independent feet is if I'm kicking, right, I'm kicking that one, that my outside foot, I'm bringing the post foot with me. Independent feet, boom, 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 boom. I want to keep my feet as close to the ground as possible. I don't want big choppy steps, all right? I want to keep my feet as close to the ground as possible so I can change direction, all right? Because pass pro is all about winning feet with, winning blocks with your feet first, all right? and then utilizing your punch, all right, to stop the defender, okay? Something, a key I give my tackles is we call it the junction point, okay? If I'm the left tackle here, quarterback's behind me, all right? I think in any protection, a key coaching point is whatever protections you have, whether it's quick game, six-man pro, quarter roll, whatever it may be, sprint out, have your kids understand where the setup point of the quarterback is. All right, and they'll adjust their techniques and they'll understand where the heck that thing is going. And they know they can't beat in a quarter roll, they can't get beat outside. Wherever, whatever pass protections you have, whether it's play action or whatever, whatever it may be. All right, what I tell our tackles is the junction point is the point where the defensive end has a straight line to the outside shoulder of the quarterback, right? The point where you intersect him is called the junction point. So I never want to kick farther than that, all right? I want to keep my outside eye to his inside eye as a general aiming point, all right? Fighting to keep my shoulders square, all right? So if coach was coming up the field, Trevor, all right, and I get a couple kicks in, I'm settling at the junction point right here. I don't want to keep kicking back. All he's going to do is turn and counter on me, okay? I want to settle my feet. That doesn't mean stop. That just means settle my feet at the junction point right here, okay? And understand that once I make contact, be ready for the redirect and me having to go to the post, okay? 
So as far as when we talk about pass pro, I talk about, again, post and kick. That's the verbiage that I talk to the kids about, all right? We have four basic pass sets, all right, that we use, all right, in our pass pro. Two to the post, set the post, hold the post, two kicks. We don't need anything else. This encompasses everything that we're going to see, all right, from an O-line standpoint, whether it's full slide protection, all right, whether it's uh, head up protection, all right, all man scheme, whatever it may be, okay. So how we drill it is, I drill it right and left side. I got some video coming up here, all right. So again, let's say I am the uh, left tackle, all right. I'll put a defender inside, okay, and the first uh, part of the progression is two to the post. So it'll come out of a two point or a three point, and it'll go post, post. He'll punch on the second post, all right. What I tell my guys is this, if I'm going to the post, for example, in a full slide protection, if you punch past the midline of the defender, get ready for him to come back across you. That's a key coaching point when you're teaching that, that technique, okay? If I got a guy head up, all right, coach, you want to stand up so we can get a little bit of action here? If I got a guy head up, I want to take away the easiest part, which is this inside part right here, all right? So all I'm going to do is set this post foot. I'm just going to pick up, put down, or slightly step inside, all right, depending on how tight this defender is. I want to make him go through me or back outside, all right, so I can cut off the inside move, all right. Very rarely do we use this pass set, all right, for except for maybe head up four techniques or head up two techniques, all right, that we get as far as we go. The third one, all right, is hold the post, all right. This is the post foot, this is the kick foot. If we've got a tight outside shade, right? We talked about relationship, outside eye to inside eye. I don't need to go any farther than that. So if I've got a really tight technique, right? I'm just gonna hold this post foot in the ground and just a short six inch step, all right? With my kick foot. And that gets me in relation as he's starting to come up the field, that gets me in relation to be able to punch. Okay, I don't want to kick here because what just happened? Now I lost my leverage and he goes back inside of me, all right? And the last one is two kicks. So we, got, we, can, we can drill it with a regular five, a wide five, working at the junction point. We just come out the field and going kick, kick, boom, all right? So I just keep drilling my guys on this. What are the four sets we got, guys? Okay, coach, two to the post. Set the post, hold the post, two kicks. We don't need anything else, all right? It encompasses everything that we're going to talk about. Okay, I got some video coming up here. All right, we talk about uh, tackle sets like I, I did earlier. We have a kick set and a vertical set. We kick set on the man side of our protections. We vertical set on the fan or the slide side, however you want to determine it, however you guys verbalize it to your kids, okay? All right, because we want to keep that cup, all right, as wide as we can get it, all right, and as protected as we can get it so we can create a pocket for the quarterback to be able to maneuver, all right, and set up behind us, all right. So those are just a couple of things that we use for the tackles, all right. We don't want to open our hips. We don't want to get, uh, you, you see guys that, that, that get beat. You know, I was watching the, the, the NFL in the playoffs, and you saw, um, you know, Denver's got some pretty legit pass rushers. I don't know if you guys saw those dudes, but, all right, that's why they're very highly regarded in the league, all right. But they either got around the edge because guys didn't get out of their stances fast enough or they got you so panicked, all right, that you get way back and then they take the counter move inside, okay. All right, so um, the, the, the thing that uh, – that we talk about as far as an offensive line when we're going in our pass pro drill, all right, is just be patient. Don't panic, all right? I shouldn't see any panic in your set. If you are, then you don't know what the hell you're doing or you haven't mastered the technique yet, okay? <clears throat> so, so that was a set the post, like a head up technique. This is our right side of the line. So all I do is I just, 
I just flip it. That's how I drill it, right side, left side, okay? See how they extend their punch, right? See how tight their hands are. I like the guys holding the bags tight, all right? I'm kind of, you know, OCD about this. I like them. I don't like this. I like them holding the bags tight so they don't put their hands through the, the armpit. It just, the, the bag's dangling all over the dang place, all right? So there's a two to the, or a, a set the post. This is a hold the post. I don't like 67. Why? He's, he's, over, he's over kicked it. You guys see that? Right? So we got tight shades on the outside of our right side. All we need is a quick, a quick step, man. It could be a pickup put down depending on how tight he is, or it could be a short six inch step. All right? We're trying to extend our punch. Then we get two kicks. All right? I got the left side coming up here. Boom, two to the post, two to the post right there. Head up, set the post, bam, right there. Short punch, right? We don't have a lot of time, all right, to be working all right, a long punch. The punch has got to be short and concise, all right? And what I do is I get up right next to a wall to teach the kids, all right, how concise it has to be. In fact. I know I'm going to move this film, so sorry. I just want to give you, want to scare the, the room on the other side. Yes, I, I personally believe that I don't want to give, the, the ground behind us is valuable real estate. It's like real estate in California, man. All right? I mean, that stuff costs a lot of money. All right? So we don't want to give that thing up. All right? So we want to work at the junction point. We want to work them. That's what we do at our level. You guys might do something different at a high school level depending on the skill set of your kids. All right? We talk about punch, right? <clears throat> now, I can have a really strong punch just from this, this right here, all right? Because it doesn't take, I don't need to extend very long. I can have a really quick, concise punch like that, all right? Where well, you guys can hear that, okay? And it usually wakes up my room. It's a good... It's a good wake-up call for some of the guys to start to doze a little bit. But, uh, um, but it's a short, concise punch now, all right, that will protect our chest, all right, keep our hands inside, all right. <clears throat> There's our, uh, now, the center doesn't do 56, doesn't do as good a job as 60, but you can see that short step, that's a hold the post set right there. Don't need to go any farther than that with a tight outside shade. And then we got two kicks right there. We got good body position. We got good punch. Now, you see how 56 is kind of, he's got a little bit of lean inside, right? I teach that. We teach the punch with leverage, right? So I don't want to over-exaggerate, but I want, I want that punch with leverage. Everything we do is with leverage. In inside zone, we lift with leverage, right? We're trying to punch with leverage, okay? We're trying to punch inside out. So that's, uh, that's what we talk about, you know, as far as when we drill the pass pro stuff. All right, there's just another, another set of it right here, so I'm going to keep going here. Okay, one of my favorite drills of all time, man. All right, we call this in and out. All right, in and out. All right, it's set up very simply. All right, <clears throat> I set up a right side and a left side. We go simultaneously. Sometimes I'll just split and do a pass pro circuit and we'll do all the left side players and all the right side players. If you have interchangeable, obviously this drill is, very, is, is a really good drill. So you can see I've got, um, I've got uh, three cones here or two cones here with a middle cone, two cones here with a middle cone, right? And I normally drill this both guys at the same time. One right side, one left side, okay? So this is our left tackle, Sean Hickey here, all right? And all he's going to do is he's going to work, all right, this track right here, in and out. That's all he's doing until I tell him to stop, okay? Now, the coaching point is, is he's got to get to this outside cone, all right, and he's going he's gonna to kick, and he's going to kick, and he's going to kick until he, yell, and hear, until he hears me yell change. As soon as he hears me yell change, he's going to plant that foot and post, post, post. Then he gets back to the middle, he'll, he'll go back, start kicking at a 45, fighting to keep his shoulder square, and I'll yell change again, all right? 
So the command, as I start to drill on the whistle, he'll, he'll uh, kick set, I'll yell change, he'll come back, he'll go back, I'll yell change, and we can do this all day long. All right, it's a great conditioner for your kids. All right, it's a key, it's a key component to what I teach because we want to keep our weight inside the midline. I'm looking for guys not to push their shoulders back and forth. All right, so you can see Sean right here. I want him to grab grass as fast as he can go. All right, and he's got that punch right there. He's moving his hands and feet. There's the change. There he's going back. Now I'm yelling change. Now he's pushing off. Now he's coming back. All right, this is the world we live in. When you watch your one-on-one -on -one pass pro, this is all the world we live in, guys. All right, is this short area right here. I got freshmen that the first day we do this, they, they can't do it at all. All right, they're, they're all over the place. All right, but it takes a little bit of time. All right, now I got Rob. He don't move as well. See what I'm looking for? You see how he shifted his weight? Did you guys see that right there? So that's something I catch on film. I say, hey, man, right there, when that guy makes the move, you got all your weight on your right foot. You're dead. All right? Against a good player, he's going to take an inside rush. He's going to feel that you got your weight on the outside foot. He's going to come back underneath. Okay? So, again, protect the inside with your life. All right? Protect the inside with your life. He just did it again right there. Did you guys see it? It's, it's, it's hard for kids, especially early on, all right, when we do this drill, to not have to, 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 to get used to keeping their weight inside their midline because they always tend to shift their weight back and forth. I think that's a key component of what we're trying to do here. <clears throat> All right, let me get to the next progression here. All right, this is Amari. He played right tackle for us. He's going left here. He's got really good feet. All right? But again, see that pause right there? See that right foot come up? I like the way he's moving with independent feet, though. See it? As that left foot moves, that right foot's coming with him, okay? And that's what we're teaching, independent feet, tight to the ground, all right, being able to move, going back and forth. Now, is he not trying to, as he's going back, not trying to keep his shoulders square but turning? What I, what I tell him is to unlock and open up their hips so they can try and reach for that back side. Are they trying to keep their shoulders square? Yes. They can turn a little bit slightly, but I don't want their whole bodies turned. You know what I mean? That, 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 that last cone is more so for the tackles, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, or really for the guards who are on that slide side and they get pressure and they need to fan out but also keep their shoulders square, you know what I mean? So, all right, this is a drill, uh, and this is what, something I incorporate with. Any questions on the in and out? The other part of it that I use is I get a 50-pound sandbag, all right? I do the same drill. All right, I actually start to drill off that way. Pick up the 50-pound sandbag, and we just go back and forth, just like this. And we just do that track. All right, that is a daily drill for me. That is daily, daily, daily. All right. This one I call triangle punch. All right, triangle punch. We've got three defenders here in a triangle. All right. This is the best way that I've found to simulate twists and games up front. Okay, because when you use, or when you try to walk through it and those types of things, it just doesn't end up the, the way we're looking for. All right, so we have the first guy, all right, kick here, and then now he's got to come off and post on the second guy and then be able to set on the third guy. All right, so imagine, all right, in this kid's world, hey, he's punching a guy, oh man. My guy comes inside. I've got to go to the post right now, all right? And then, or I've got to be ready to take the looper that's coming from the inside out. This drill encompasses all three of those things, all right? A penetrator and a looper, all right? So when you look at it, I like uh, uh, Kendall's punch right here. His hands are tight. He's moving his feet. See how he settles right there, right? He doesn't keep going. He just settles. He just settles his feet right there, okay? Waits for that, is patient, and then punches off the last one. All right, here's another, uh, here's another uh, 
thing right here. Now, this is a mistake, and this is why I put it on. The thing that's wrong with 55's punch is you see how it's overextended? Do you guys see that? All right, yeah, his arm, he's, 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 trying to, he's trying to do this. He's leaving his hips behind, right? We want to keep, all right, our chin back, all right, and up. We want to keep our chest out, all right? So you can see he's kind of launching. He's just launching, guys, right? This kid is, is a big, strong kid upper body-wise. He lacks a little bit of lower, lower body mobility, all right? It's something that we continue to work with him. He, he's got a punch. I mean, he can, he can punch with the best of them now. He, he'll put you on the ground. Uh, in this drill, I don't. I just work both of them, yep. But when we're in that drag hand drill, right, we, we'll, we'll latch on with the outside hand. All right, we, we do do that. What's that? This is called triangle. This is called the triangle drill. Yep. Now, I switched it up a little bit, and I, I changed the order of the players coming up. But you can see this is our left tackle, Sean, right here. So he's kicking, he's posting, and then he's getting ready to redirect. All right, back off this guy right here. Yeah, I work with everybody because eventually those guys, whether it's a three-man twist inside, all right, or a two-man twist uh, between guard tackle or uh, tackle center, we have the same, same challenges, all right? This is a young man right here who was a basketball player in high school. When I first got to Syracuse, he, he couldn't get into a stance, all right? So you can kind of see he's, he's, he's a big, long kid, but he doesn't move as well as the other kids, all right? His punch doesn't extend. All right, here's that sandbag drill I was talking about. This is in and out sandbag. All right, it's just muscle memory, right? Just getting them to move. And it's hard with a 50 pound sandbag. All right, we go two guys at a time, and then we get him on that course. We let him come back to the middle, and then we, we hand the bag off. So what I'm looking for is short, independent feet, all right? The first time we did this drill, you can see, all right, because the bag is so heavy, right, they pick up their feet a little bit. I want them to keep their feet tighter to the ground, okay? I definitely want to keep their feet tighter to the ground. And that's a sandbag right there. So I think you guys got the, uh, the gist of it. Remember, one guy should have his post foot up. I don't like this part right here, all right? One guy should have his post foot up, all right, on both sides and have, and have a definite kick foot, and that should not change, all right? So make sure when you're drilling the, the drill that you don't let your kid's feet allow to become even, all right? We always want to keep a post, and we always want to keep a kick side or a kick uh, set. All right, a couple of drills that I didn't have video of that I really use. Now, when I get into pass pro, guys, I circuit it, okay? Because, again, I have an assistant, all right? I got to try to get multiple drills done at the same time. So that drill right there, like I might have the right side go do triangle drill and the left side do in and out with me, okay? We'll drill that for three or four minutes. I'll blow the whistle. They hustle over to the other coach. Now the left side's working triangle and the right side's working in and out, okay? I really believe as a conditioner that helps, and I also believe you get more reps that way, all right? Instead of, I, the one thing as a coach that I despise is a lot of guys standing around. It drives me bonkers, man, all right? So I just think we can be more effective coaches, all right, and, and be able to, to interact with more kids, especially those programs that have young kids who need the, the extra reps and need the development, okay, as far as the skill set goes, all right? This is a kick set and redirect drill, all right? And all we do here, all right, is we have three bags set up, all right? So let's say on the right tackle, all right? We'll have a right side and the left side in the centers, okay? And this is how I kind of put, uh, when I put my drill matrix together, all right, this is, this is how I scheme it up. I put the objective of the drill, the frequency, all right, the relative to the game, and then I describe it, 
okay? It just, I don't know, it makes me feel better at night, okay, that I can be able to transfer those drills wherever I go, you know, wherever program I might go to, okay? All right, a kick set redirect drill is just a quick punch drill, all right, where I'm just kicking and that first bag will come to me, I'm punching it. Second bag, punching it. Third bag, punching it. And then now I'll come right back up that stem and come to the post, all right, and then punch back those, those things, all right? Again, we're, st we're working in the same type of plane, but I'm just working and trying to develop the punch, all right? So add that into our repertoire as far as one of the drills that will work into that circuit, okay, as far as our, our, our kick and, and redirect. Okay, another one is rapid punch. All right, we'll have two bags, all right? I'll, I'll, I'll let the coaches, coach, come on up here. We'll have two bags, or two guys, all right? <clears throat> and we'll, we'll separate our guys into groups of three, all right? And all we're working is a rapid punch drill, okay? And I'll say, hey, this guy's going first, okay? So if I'm the offensive player, these guys are the two defensive players. This guy's going to come at me. I'm going to kick, punch off. Same way he's coming back. I'm kicking, punching off. I'm kicking, punching off. And we're going to work that probably about for about a 10-yard period, all right? And I'll blow the whistle dead, okay? So we get rapid punch. Again, what I'm trying to work is independent feet, all right? Wait inside the midline, all right? Tight punch, okay? Don't allow your kids to punch and then drop their hands, right? It should be punch, 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 moving your feet back and forth. Okay, and that's how you develop a quick punch. All right, so again, I might take um, rapid punch with the left side guys and the right side guys will go do kick and redirect. Okay, so again, you're, you're getting double the work because you're able to circuit those things, all right, and then move forward with it. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, a couple other drills that, that I really like, all right? You guys have those pop-up drills or those pop-up bags? Anybody have those at school? All right, I like it for muscle memory. What I'll do is I'll get a big, one of these big rubber bands and I'll wrap it around the bag and the player, okay? All right, so envision that. And why I do that is when we punch that bag, the pop-up will pop back to us, all right? So another quick punch drill is I'll wrap a long rubber band, you get one from uh, the strength conditioning coach if you have one, wrap it around, all right, so that now there's tension on that pop-up bag, and I'll sit there and I'll go, I'll just punch it with my left hand 10 times, right hand, right, I'll punch it with both, I'll punch it here, I'll punch it here, all right, and you're getting, it's like, it's kind of like a, um, a gym bag, like a, like a boxing bag, you'll get it to come back at you, all right, where you're able to quickly get a lot of reps, all right, I do that with all the pop-ups. So we got four pop-ups. I can get four guys going, all right? And then next guys, boom, next guys are going in, okay? And that's how we circuit a couple of those drills, okay? But I really, really believe in circuiting your drills, all right, and then developing your punch, okay, as far as that goes, all right? Any questions on pass pro? I can, yeah. If you want to step up, let's go. <laughs> no, we, um, um, no, uh, when I, t when I talk to the guys about, I'll, I'll go through a couple things. When we get beat outside, okay, all right, there comes to a point where it's a point of no return, all right, that we now have to get out of our kick, all right, and we have got to push that guy and run him by, okay. And what I teach is, come on through here, coach, all right, so let's say I'm at a point now where I'm a beaten player, right? I want to get my inside hand right on his hip, right, and push him through and try to, try to get my, my, uh, my, my, my outside hand and bring it in tight to me, right? So I can just push him by and run the hoop and now turn it in basically into a glorified drive block, all right? So that's the technique we use, okay? Couple other things, all right. Sorry, I'm gonna pick on you now. All right. Couple other things. How many guys see a lot of bull rush? Okay. All right. I'm gonna give you a couple things as far as uh, defending the bull rush here. Okay. So 
First thing is, when, it, when this defender is coming right down the middle of me, and what I teach our kids is this. Know your man, number one, pass pro situation. I don't care if it's we're going against our guys, know your man, all right? Know what his first move is and understand the counter, all right? Take away the first move, all right? React to the counter move, okay? And then at some point, expect the bull. A lot of guys will speed rush and then turn it into a bull rush once they get to quarterback depth, okay? But what we try to talk about is a, a couple different ways. If I'm getting bull rush, let's say I'm, I'm back on my heels, all right? Coach has got me at a, at a defeated position here, all right? Now, I need to recreate leverage, all right? So how do I do that, okay? I'm going to power hop this thing, all right? And that doesn't mean get my feet up and do this, all right? That means get my feet at a 45, come on coach, get my feet at a 45 and power hop, right? And sink my butt and get my hips down. While at the same point, all right, what I'm trying to do here now is he's, as he's got my hands here, I need to recreate leverage with my hands because I'm at a defeated position. You guys with me, right? So as I'm hopping, I'm going to go one, two with my hands, all right? I'm going to go one, two, and then turn it into a drive block, okay? Because as he's pushing right here, I don't have any leverage. Once I get his elbows up, now I got leverage, right? You guys see that? Okay, I push his leverage off me now. Now I can get back underneath, okay? So as coach is trying to, uh, is trying to bull rush me right here, just give me a little bit of push. I'm power hopping, I'm going boom, boom, and then I'm going to go through, okay? Don't try to do both, go ahead. Don't try to do both hands at the same time because there's no way the human body can hop back, be fast enough to do this and not get their body pushed back, okay? So it's got to be hop, hop, boom, boom, one, two. Bring your hips through, all right, and then run your feet. That's how you stop. That's a version of stopping the bull rush right there. Okay, is with those hands right there. You're hopping to the point where now you feel like, okay, I'm at a defeated position and he's bull rushing me. Now I've got to stop the penetration right now. All right, I've got to go hop, hop. It might be two, it might be three hops, right? I've got to, I've got to recoil the hands, all right? And then I've got to come through and drive it, okay? All right, the other thing, come on, step up one more time. The other thing is, all right, is if he's got his hands right here, all right, I can clamp down with my armpits and pop like this, all right, and I just recreated leverage again, right? I've gone from a defeated position to now this is not going to feel very good on his elbows, all right? So <clears throat> if I want, I can squeeze, sorry, I can squeeze, pop, and then bring my hips through, all right, or hop it, one, two, recoil, and then drive my feet. The key point of it is driving your hips through, all right, on the finish. You're basically turning it into the drive finish now. Okay, makes sense? So hopefully that helps you guys a little bit as far as the bull rush part of, uh, of, of what you guys see. Okay, and then the escapability. All right. Questions? Yeah, coach. Where he's an overextender? Yeah. Head back, right? So the thing I, I, I talk about, like day one, right, is some of you guys, you know, some of you guys aren't old enough to see one of those old lawnmowers, right? Some of you guys are, all right? I remember the old lawnmower, not the push button one, all right? The one that you got to pull that thing, right? Okay, so day one, all right, what I try to do with the guys is, is get them to pull the lawnmower, Okay, and that's just coming from here. We'll go out of a three-point stance, and we're just boom. It's getting used to getting our heads back, right? Get into position, right? And that's the that's kind of the visualization that I give them, right? Sometimes I got to go on YouTube and actually put it on because none of these kids have seen what the hell an old uh, lawnmower is, right? 
So when I say pull the lawnmower, they're all looking at me like I got a third eye. All right. So, but, um, but this, right? Getting this hand back because it's going to force your shoulders to get back, right? We never want our chest. We don't want our chest over our knees. Boom, right here, right here, right here. We live, I just sit in here and we do a, we do a wave drill as well. I didn't include in the, in the drill, but I'll have three guys pop out and we'll just work this, boom, right? Just get them nice and tired. We, I, I do the same drill with bands, right? Where they, they gotta go against resistance, right? And we're just working this. All I wanna do is just live in this world right here. I could, if my, if my old big ass can do it, then they can do it too. All right, and that's all we're doing. We're going post kick, post kick. You know what I mean? If I'm kicking, I'm dragging my post. If I'm posting, I'm dragging my kick. I want to keep my feet as tight to the floor as possible, all right, so that there's no wasted space. I never want to be in a position where I get up and I got one foot way off the ground. Make sense? Yeah, coach. So kick and redirect is just on one plane, okay? So it'd be like, uh, I need three volunteers. Okay. So let's get you guys uh, in a little bit. Let's go you here, you here, and you here, okay? So let's say I'm a left side player right here, okay? All right? So I'm going to start off the drill. I'm going to kick. He's going to come at me. Bam, punch. All right? I'm keep coming. He's coming at me. Bam, punch. He's coming at me. Bam, punch. Now I'm coming back up the same row. Post, post, bam. Post, post, bam, right? So I'm just working this, this plane right here. This kind of 45, 35 degree plane right here, okay? Where as far as rapid punch is when I'm going back and forth between the two players, all right? Where it's a group of three, right? So think of uh, kick and redirect as a group of four and rapid punch as a group of three. Yep. So <clears throat> those are really, guys, the only drills that I use as far as the pass pro game. Okay. The other thing is I walk through stunts and, and those types of things, all right, that I think are beneficial. We do a bull rush period once a week, all right, using all those little techniques that I just talked about, a few of those as we, as we go through, whether, whether we're recoil or we're clamping down and we're popping the elbow, all right. <clears throat> Um, and then just circuiting, you know, as far as uh, how I present it to the kids is I have video on it, all right, so they can see what the drill looks like, and then we execute and we talk through the drill, all right. I actually give our kids a test on what the drill is, all right, so they know if I have uh, captains in the summer where your coaches are not around, I can say, hey, I got this written down, okay. Hey, you guys take the left side. Our, my, my one captain will take the left side. He'll do rapid punch. The other captain will do in and out. They know exactly how to set the drill up. They know exactly how to teach it. They know exactly what we're looking for. Okay? I think from a coaching standpoint, when you look at it and say, okay, my drills, can I teach it? Can they visualize it? Can they mimic it? And can they teach it? Right? When you have your own kids that can teach your drills, and they know them by name, quick buzzwords. I think that makes you a hell of a lot more effective coach, all right, than everybody else out there. When, when you, can, you can teach it, they can visualize it, they can mimic it, and they can teach it back. That's when they know the concept. I always tell our players, you don't know the concept until you can come up in front of me or in front of the room and teach it. All right, so it's a great way to drill, guys. All right, teach me inside zone. What does this mean? What does that term mean? You know what I mean? A couple other things. You know, I, I had something uh, from a teaching standpoint that I wanted to share. I, I didn't have in this clinic, but um, 